Hello students, in the last lecture we have seen a necessary and sufficient condition for a finite non-empty subset to be a subgroup. Uh, we saw that closure property is enough if the subgroup is finite. Also we have seen how to use Lagrange's theorem to narrow down our search of uh, to finding subgroups of certain orders. Let me uh, once again explain in this example what we mean by that. Uh, in this problem we are dealing with a finite group Z6 and uh, we wish to find all subgroups of this. Since Z6 is a finite group Z6 contains six elements in all. Uh, we know that the six elements are 0 bar, 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bar, 4 bar and 5 bar. And therefore order of this group is equal to 6. The divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Lagrange's theorem tells us that if uh, we have a finite group and if H is a subgroup of G, then order of H divides the order of G. So, uh, we first obtain the divisors of 6. So, Lagrange's theorem more importantly tells us that we, uh, this particular group will not have subgroups of orders 4 and 5. And therefore, it would be futile to look for a subgroup of order 4 or order 5 for this group. It only tells us that possibly this group has subgroups of orders 1, 2, 3 and 6. It only talks about possibilities. Uh, but let us explore each case separately. Let us first look at subgroup of order 1. Now if our subgroup has to have only one element then uh, obviously it must have the most important element and nothing else. And the most important element in any group is the identity. So the subgroup of order 1 the subgroup of order 1 will be set containing only identity and in this case identity is 0 bar. So this is our subgroup of Z6 of order 1. Uh, likewise if we want a subgroup of order 6 uh, it will have to be firstly a subset of Z6 of order 6 and uh, the only such subset is the whole of Z6. Therefore, the subgroup of order 6 is the improper subgroup Z6 itself. Uh, so, we have found a subgroup of order 1, we have found subgroup of order 6. Uh, let us now look for subgroups of order 2. Once we are done with that, then we will look for subgroups of order 3. So, let us first look at proper non-trivial subgroups of order 2. So, we first obtain subgroups of order 2. So, what I really need to do is to list subsets of order 2. That means list subsets of Z6 containing two elements each. And then because they are all finite, closure property should be enough. So, for each one of those subsets, we'll check whether the closure property is satisfied. Now, uh, if you directly go to subsets of Z6, you will get in all 6 C2 subsets of size 2. That means we will get uh, 15, 15 subsets of order 2. And uh, it's going to be a lot of work to check the closure property for each one of those subsets. So, uh, if we do not really wish to work that hard, then we will have to think of smarter ways of reducing our choices. Now, remember we are looking for subgroups. If we are looking for a subgroup, the most important element has to be there in that set. 
and the most important element is the identity which in this case is zero so if for example i look at a set containing say one bar and two bar if i take this subset then this is never going to become a subgroup because this simply does not contain identity so out of these 15 subsets we can throw away some of them which are not going to be of any use to us so what we will do is we will narrow down our choices we are not going to look at all 15 we are going to play it smart and we are going to look at only certain smart choices of subsets so what i'll do is since I want it to be a subgroup. One element has to be identity. So I know that one element has to be zero bar. Without that, my subset is not going to become a subgroup. So I freeze one element. So I'm not going to change this element. I need to therefore choose only one more element in the set. Now another element. So it can be either one, two, three, four, or five. So my second choice. uh i will have five choices it can be either one bar or two bar or three bar or four bar or five bar so notice that from 15 we are down to simply five subsets so we will look at only these five subsets and we will see which ones become subgroups so let me list those subsets the good ones the good candidates for subgroups let me take h1 to be set containing 0 and 1 h2 to be set containing 0 and 2 h3 to be set containing 0 and 3 h4 to be set containing 0 and 4 and h5 to be set containing 0 and 5 and these are all subsets of size 2 let us now see which of these become subgroups remember for a finite subset to become a subgroup closure property is enough so we simply make the composition table for each one of these sets group operation is addition modulo 6 so this will be 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 1 plus 1 is 2 and there we are this element is not an h1 since this element is not in h1 closure property is not satisfied and therefore h1 is not a subgroup of z6 i'll give you all some time to pause your video and try out the composition table for h2 so if you have tried it out you will notice that closure property is not satisfied for h2 either because 2 plus 2 will be 4 which is not an h2 so closure property will not be satisfied for h2 also let's look at h3 what do you think happens for h3 quickly make your own composition table and then check your calculations with me remember this is happening in z6 operation is addition modulo 6 so this will be 0 3 3 and 3 plus 3 is 6 bar but in z6 6 bar is equal to 0 bar and here as you can see all entries in the body of the table are from the given set so for the set h3 closure property is satisfied and therefore h3 is a subgroup of z6 once again you can pause your video and make a mini composition table for h4 and h5 and prove that h4 as well as h5 are not going to be subgroups of z6 okay so out of all the smart choices that i made only one of them becomes a subgroup so this particular group has only one subgroup of order 2 so we are done with subgroups of order 2 remember this group also possibly has subgroups of order 3 so let us now look for subgroups of order 3 so we next obtain 
subgroups of order three. Now once again, if I go about this blindly, then I will have plenty of subsets to deal with, and I don't want to do so much of work. Uh, I wish to take select three elements at a time now out of the given six. So in all, I will have six three six three three such subsets. and uh, that is going to be a big number to deal with so i uh, need to make my smart choices once again but remember this time i'm looking for three elements again i know that because i'm looking for a subgroup one element has to be identity so i freeze this element but other than this also i need two more elements now if i have to choose two more elements from the remaining five it still means I have five C two choices, and five C two is going to be ten. So I will still be dealing with ten subsets, which according to me is still not a very efficient way of solving the problem. So if the problem gets tougher, you simply get smarter. You go to the next level of smartness. And what exactly do I mean by that? Let me tell you. So uh, let's look at the next good choice of subset. Now remember, we are looking for subsets of order three. So zero bar. Let me choose my second element as one bar, and then I'm smartly going to choose my third element. Uh, remember, if I want this to be a subgroup, ultimately every element must have an inverse. So one bar also must have an inverse. So with one bar, the last element that I must choose, ideally it should be inverse of one bar. And inverse of one bar in Z six for addition is five bar. I hope you all remember how to take additive inverses. So with one bar, it is pointless taking any other element like two, three, or four. It will never become a subgroup. So this is one choice that we have. And the other smart choices with zero. Suppose I take two as my next element, then along with two. I should take my third element as inverse of two, and inverse of two is four. So this again becomes a good choice, and then I have one last choice left with zero. If I take three, then inverse of three is three itself, which is there in the set. So I'm free to choose my last element, but if I take my last element as one. I'm in trouble because inverse of one is five, which is not in this set. If I take two bar again, I'm in trouble because inverse of two bar is four bar, which will not be there in this set. So with three bar, there is no good choice of third element. So these are the only two subsets of order three, which I will call as good candidates because. Quite a few conditions are satisfied. They have identity. Every element has an inverse. This, of course, does not mean that they will be subgroups. I am only trying to narrow down my search for subgroups. So let me quickly make a composition table for H six. So zero one five zero one five one plus one is two. There. Don't even bother to complete the table. This element is not in H six, so closure property is not satisfied for H six, and therefore H six is not a subgroup of Z six. Pause your video, prepare a composition table for H seven, and check what happens. Remember the operation is addition modulo six, so I trust you all to be able to do these calculations. Two plus four is six, which is zero bar in Z six. Four plus four is eight. Eight minus six is two. So you will notice that every entry in the body of this table is from the given set. Therefore, for H seven, closure property is satisfied, and therefore H seven is a subgroup of Z six. So. uh this this is the only subgroup of order 3 so if i were to list all possible subgroups of z6 then i'll get
and let me list them in order of uh, increasing sizes. So firstly subgroup of order 1 that is set containing only the identity. This is the trivial subgroup. Then we have subgroup of order 2, subgroup of order 3 and finally subgroup of order 6 which is Z6 itself. So these are all subgroups of Z6. In the next lecture, we will look at yet another example of finding all possible subgroups of a finite group. That will be all for now. Thank you.